Hey APSAT students, uh, welcome once again. In this video, I'm going to explain calculating line of best fit by hand. So if you watch the last video, we walked through the process of finding that R value by hand. Uh, I want to remind you that on the AP test, uh, you can use your calculator to find the R value and the line of best fit. But uh, there's a lot of value and understanding that comes with showing you that process by hand and, and where all those things come from. So that's why we're doing this. Uh, so the, the uh, first thing you need to do is make sure you've opened the calculating line of best fit by hand, handout, either print it out and follow along uh, writing things in or uh, make sure you've at least looked at it on here. So we have a set of data just like before in X and Y. So what I want you to do is type those into your L1 and L2 in your calculator and try to walk through that same process we used before. So this handout does a nice job of walking us through this, this process that we did on the last video. So we're gonna find X bar, then we're gonna find Y bar, uh, and then we're going to calculate the Z scores for the X's and the Z scores for the Y's. Once we've found each of those Z scores, we're gonna multiply those all together. So in each pair of points, x, y, we're going to find the, the, the product of z, x times z, y. Uh, then finally, uh, what, once we find those products, we're going to add those all together and use this formula in step five to calculate the r value. So what I'd like you to do uh, is pause this video and, and take some time and try that right now. And once you've tried that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk you through what I got and you can check your answers. Make sure you, you understand that process before you just continue this video. All right, so hopefully you've had a chance to try that and we are going to talk about what results we got. Um, so uh, if we were in class, we'd have at least 10 minutes to work through that process and then we would make sure we all agree. Uh, so I have my data in my calculator. I made a scatter plot of the data. You can see that this is uh, a roughly uh, linear positive relationship. And uh, if I were to think about a line of best fit, oops, I lost my, my actual graphing calculator. Here we go. Let's try that. Let's see if I can draw it in here. See if it lets, uh, every time I do that, it won't let me. That's okay. Uh, anyway. Uh, there's a, a, a roughly positive linear relationship there. And so if we go to the results I got, so one second. Okay, so uh, for my mean, um, I got a three for the X and 2.8 for the Y. I also got a standard deviation of 1.58 for the X and 1.30 for the Y. As I walk through that process then in my R value, so, so I, I did the Z scores in my calculator, I multiplied them all together, added them up, and I got, uh, then I multiplied by one over one, uh, one over uh, N minus one. So in this case we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five points. So it'd be one over four, and I get a, an R value of approximately 0.852. So remember that that's a roughly, uh, a fairly strong positive linear relationship. Uh, that's what that R value represents. Uh, and then if we go back to our calculator, I wanna show you, well, actually first, let's go back to the handout. So once, I, once I've got all that calculated and we've got our R value, then it walks us through actually finding that linear regression. That's the line of linear regression. Um, now this is also referred to commonly as the least squares regression line. And, or another, another name for it is the line of best fit. So what we need to do is uh, find the B value and the Y intercept. Uh, uh, so slope actually uh, is, uh, and this one referred to as B. Um, and so it's, it's going to be R times the standard deviation of Y divided by standard deviation of X. So the spread of the Y's over the spread of the X's. And when you think about spread of the Y's over spread of the X's, that really makes a lot of sense because remember slope is change in Y over change in X. 
So, uh, so this is uh, an another way to think of standard deviation is change in y over change in x. And uh, so spread of the y's and spread of the x's. Now, if those, if those y's are really bunched together, so we have a, uh, a very small value for uh, the, the change in y's. So those y's are really, really bunched together. So if there's not a lot of spread in the y's, something like this, your slope, it makes sense. We're gonna have a small numerator and we'd have a, a small slope. If we have y's that are more spread out, like that, where the y's are more spread out, your slope is gonna be bigger. Same with the x's. This one has x's that are more spread out. This one has x's that are less spread out. So when you, when you think deeply about that formula, it really makes sense. And then we multiply that by r, that gives us our slope. And finally, uh, we go back and we can calculate the y-intercept using that. Now, the reason that says b and a is because uh, on the TI calculator, uh, when we find line of best fit, I believe those are the letters it uses. Um, typically, uh, in statistics, for some reason, we don't use mx plus b. We say we say uh, we could either do this. We could do uh, we could do a plus bx. A plus b. <laughs> it's messy. Bx. Or uh, you, I believe in, in the calculus or in the statistics formula sheet, let's take a look how they, they do it. Actually, they do call it A and B. Uh, that's a change this year. That's a good change. They, the new formula sheet changed that. They used to have it B0 and B1. But anyway, this, this is the formula we're talking about. So the A is actually the y-intercept in statistics, and the B is actually the slope. And that that's uh, opposite. The B is actually uh, B is typically thought of as the y intercept when we regularly do algebra. So so just you know keep you on your toes. You got to switch those letters around. So uh, I, let's take a look actually by uh, doing that by hand. If you want to take a second, pause the video, make sure you know how to do this. I'm going to show you what I got when I did all that by hand. So we already found the R value right here. There's my standard deviation of Y divided by standard deviation of X. So I end up with 0.7 for my slope. And then I go back and find my Y intercept by hand. Get, I gotta get me out of the way there. So the Y intercept is gonna uh, also be 0.7. So my line of best fit here is 0.7 plus 0.7 X or linear regression line. Now uh, the hat on the Y tells us that this is a linear regression model. Uh, it's not definitely the, our relationship. So uh, we put the hat on there. Similar to when we do proportions and had P hat, we have Y hat here. So, so there you go, there's the line of best fit. I also wanna quickly show you how to do, uh, get that on your calculator. This is probably the most important part for you to understand. So make sure you watch this. So we're gonna go to stat and then we're going to go to calculate and we're going to go down to, now you can see that this is the, the one that's typically used in algebra, lin reg, where you have the ax plus b. But like I said a minute ago, in statistics, we put the a, uh, we put the x next to the b. So it's a plus bx. So that's the one we're gonna use, number eight. And I wanna do this for L1 and L2. So I'm gonna change it to L1 and L2. So second one. And I'm gonna go down and make this second two, enter. And then I'm going to say calculate. And there's my A and my B. Now you may notice that there's no R there. If you have your own calculator, sometimes you might get that R already. We actually need to put the R in there. So we have to change the settings in the calculator. So we're gonna do what's called turning the diagnostic on. To do that, we're gonna press second, and then we're going to go to catalog. So we go all the way down here till we get to the D's. Uh, and I know there's a lot quicker way to do this. I think you just do alpha D, but I already started. So I'm just gonna keep going down here till we get to diagnostic on. So getting warmer, getting warmer. Okay. And there it is, diagnostic on. So we press enter and we press enter again. And then once you do diagnostic on, then you go back to and do that exact same entry that
that we did a minute ago. I'm going to go back to, to this one. You could go back and type it in. So uh, we get uh, the R value. So you'd see a 0.8488. And I believe when we did it a minute ago, we got 0.85. Two. So, uh, well, actually, I thought I got 0.8. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't. I thought that. Uh, yeah. 0.852. That was probably just a rounding thing there. Um, but uh, it's very close. Um, R squared is also given. We're going to talk uh, later about what R squared represents. Uh, if you actually square R, you get R squared, but it has a, a meaning in terms of the linear regression. So uh, I would encourage you to go back and rewatch some of this if you need to. I might have gone kind of fast in the video. So rewatch it. Feel free to send me messages. Remember, on Thursday this week, we have our meet. So you can ask me more questions about what's going on with all this. Uh, but uh, it's very important that you know how to find that line of best fit by uh, using your calculator, just going in and, and doing that on your calculator. So once you have your data in your L1 and your L2, uh, then remember I just went to stat and then I went to calc and then uh, I went down to number eight, which is lin reg. Now the other cool thing I can do, so if you notice on there it says store in uh, reg EQ. So what I could do is actually put that in uh, y1. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to go to vars and I'm going to go to y vars function y1. So what that will do is it will actually populate y1 with my line of best fit. So if I go to y1 here, it's already in there. And then if I graph it, I can see, hey, there's my line of best fit. And uh, uh, that linear regression line uh, shows the general trend of that bivariate set of data. It's kind of, at, it's increasing in a positive manner. And, and actually what that's doing is it's, it's minimizing the distance between all these points and that line. So if we were to move that line up or down, uh, you, you can, it's, it's gonna create more uh, of a, a gap between the points and the line. I believe there's a GeoGebra, GeoGebra uh, app that we played with in the, lesson last week that would help you understand that idea a little bit more. So, all right. The last thing on the assignment after you've calculated the line of best fit. So let's go down a little bit further. There's one more set of data for you to try to do by hand. So I'd like you to try that on your own. Use your calculator. Use, use what you just learned to figure out the R value and also that linear regression model for this set of data. And again, if you have questions, bring them on Thursday for our Zoom meeting at two. Or just send me an email. Uh, I understand some of you might not be able to make it to that. And so uh, feel free to send me messages and we could also maybe Zoom other times if needed. All right. I'm sorry, I didn't mean Zoom, I meant meet. All right. Thanks.